Welcome back to another special edition of Coffee Time for the Den Vice column on Facebook. Um, we've been talking about presentations all week, and today we're going to take a look at another important design element of your presentation, which is fonts. It's a subject we don't talk about much. We just sort of go in and do things willy-nilly at times, but we're going to talk about specifically what to look for in a font um, in this little short presentation. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and uh, we'll talk about fonts for a few minutes. I promise I won't keep you long. I believe that Steve Jobs had it right. It's all about typography. Um, if you'll notice, Apple uses very different type fonts than most other companies. In fact, a lot of people now are trying to copy Apple in their type because it is such an elegant choice. And elegance is maybe the wrong word to use for presentations, but I think that it sort of fits what I'm trying to talk about in minimalizing what's on your, on your screen. And in doing that, taking advantage of the white space that's there. So we're going to talk about type fonts. And the first thing we have to do is we have to look at the difference between serif fonts and sans serif fonts. Um, so a serif font um, has these serifs on the end of the letters, as you'll see over the letter T here in the word thin, or at the top of the I. Um, those, those little markings are called serifs. And you'll also notice that in, in the curve of the letters, the curve gets thinner. So that's a serif font. The sans serif font is very flat. You hear that word a lot now in iOS 7 for the iPhone. It's flat design. Um, the the serif font or the sans serif font simply means without a serif. So you'll notice at the ends of the letters they're they're just cut off. There is no little uh, serif piece hanging off the ends, and the curve of the letter is in the same thickness as the rest of the letter. So it's very flat. Typically, what you find is a serif font is used for print. So if you open up a book, if you still actually have a book, you open up a book, you'll see these serifs on the font, usually a Times New Roman or something similar to that. Um, and if you're writing a report, um, it is typically easier on the eye to read when the text is small like that, to read with these serifs on the end because they sort of help define the text for us on the page. In a presentation, however, we're looking at words that are quite large. And on the screen, we found that the sans serif fonts typically work better when we're looking at a screen environment. Our eyes can decode them easier. <clears throat> and so that's an important distinction to make. Here are just a few uh, sans serif fonts. Uh, a few that I have used quite often over the years. Pretty much everybody is familiar with Arial. Um, <clears throat> Calibri is one that I have used, and it was typically I didn't start using it until um, I had a Mac and, and got uh, associated with that. I kind of like that font. <clears throat> the Century Gothic font, excuse me, I have something in my throat here. It's going to be hard to get rid of. I like that font as well. I've used Tahoma. I've used the Verdana uh, uh, fonts for presentation in the classroom. I like those fonts. They're all very similar as you'll see, but I like those fonts because they're open. They're not really closed down fonts. We'll talk about that in just a moment. In Google presentations, <clears throat> here is, um, see if I can get my presentation back. In Google presentations, um, here is a list of some of the sans serif fonts that are available. And what I'm using in this presentation is the railway font. I really like this font. I also like the quicksand font. Um, and you'll see the ones, uh, the five there at the top are the, are the uh, last five that I've used in creating this presentation. I like the railway and the quicksand fonts because they're very open. They have very rounded letters, so the white space really shows up. It helps to define, the white space helps to define the letters for your audience. Where on the text, the serifs help define the text. In your presentation, the white space helps define the text. So it makes it much easier for 
your audience to read from a distance from the screen. Now, let's talk about this one font here. We've all used it, I'm sure, the Comic Sans font. Now, there's nothing wrong with this font, except that it's just probably the most overused font, <clears throat> especially in PowerPoint itself, um, as, as people try to create slides. And, and, and I've used it. I've used it a lot. <clears throat> Back when I was a middle school teacher, I used the Sans Serif Comic Sans font um, quite a bit because it's sort of whimsical and obviously it looks sort of like the text that comic strip creators write and and I would guess maybe I wanted my PowerPoints to sort of have that whimsical feel to them. And it's still a really good font for younger age kids, but when you get into older 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th grade on up and you have a slightly more sophisticated audience, um, then it's time to move away from the whimsical and create things that are a little more um, sophisticated. So while I won't tell you which font to use, I will tell you to watch out for this font because it is so overused. Even among professional development uh, speakers that I've been to see, uh, not so much the ones who speak for keynotes and things like that, but in a room with 30 teachers, you will see this Comic Sans font. I don't really know why. Um, so here are just a few highlighted points to think about. Number one, use a sans serif font. Something like Arial, this railway font, those kinds of things are fine. Stay away from condensed fonts. And the reason for that is because you're closing in on the white space and from a distance the font is more difficult to read. So condensed fonts um, are, are something to sort of avoid. And this, by the same token, the narrow fonts and very similar kinds of uh, design tactics here with these fonts. They have a purpose, but in the large screen in your classroom, again, from a distance, you've eliminated a lot of white space and it, and it, makes, this, it makes the font actually smaller. <clears throat> these are both 30, 30 point fonts. But from a distance, this narrow font will be more difficult to read. Please, by all means, unless you're using script as some type of artistic statement where it's more an image than text, stay away from script fonts. They are almost impossible to read. I have seen entire paragraphs written in script, put on a PowerPoint slide, and I just sort of give up. I don't, I don't, even, I don't even try to read it. It's impossible to read. Um, bold. <clears throat> now, bold has its place. We usually use bold to emphasize things, but you don't want your whole presentation to be in bold. And again, one of the reasons is because it eliminates the white space. The white space helps to define the font, and when everything is thick like this, for some people from a distance, all those letters just sort of look like this, and we don't want that. Um, and again, Bold should be used for highlighting the way capitalizing an entire word should be used to highlight something. And, and if you're on Facebook and somebody writes an entire post in all capital letters, you just sit there and you say, why are you screaming at me? Why are you yelling at me? This was nothing that I needed to be yelled at about. Because that's the, that's the thing that screams out to us. If the whole font is in bold, we sort of have that same thing of there's no emphasis here. It's all monotone. And so we lose interest in the slides. The other thing that I would recommend is you stick to one font. Um, change it up some by adding a, a bold word here or an all cap word here. Um, change the, the size of the font if you need to uh, make things more important or less important. But stick to one font. It, otherwise, it, store, it starts to look really, really messy on the screen. And the one thing that we want to do is we want to go by the KISS principle. No, 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 no not, not necessarily the rock group. The KISS principle. Keep it simple. Um, minimalistic. Somebody in the Facebook post mentioned Presentation Zen, the book Presentation Zen. Very good uh, philosophy on creating presentations. Now, whether yours look like this or look totally different, that's irrelevant. But this idea of keeping the screen clutter-free 
We don't need all the letters to come in one at a time across the screen and form paragraphs. Um, you know, we, we don't need all of the glitz and glamour of everything moving around all the time. It, it makes us tired, okay? And trust me, I used to do that. Uh, I thought that was what PowerPoint was all about, was the animations. It's not. It's about getting your message on a screen. That's all it's about. Getting it on a screen in a way people can understand it, read it, stay engaged with you, not the PowerPoint. They want to stay engaged with you. You're the teacher, not the slide. So, I hope that uh, you'll go back look at some of your some of your presentation slides, whether it's PowerPoint, Keynote, Prezi, uh, Google Presentations, whatever it is. Take a look and look at this idea of opening up the white space, choosing a font that allows the white space to help define it, and see what it does to sort of clean up the screen for you. So until next time, enjoy the coffee, and we'll see you on Facebook.